Okay, uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Juan Manuel. I'm part of the Colombian team, and today I'm going to suppose to do the problem number one called cumulative panel. Well, the problem states two different questions. The first one is how high may a ping pong ball jump using the setup on the video? And this is the setup on the video. You can see on the you can see it on the figure. And what is the maximal fraction of the total kinetic energy of the system that can be transferred to the ball? So we decided to approach this problem in three different ways. We made first a theoretical explanation. Second, we are going to talk about the experimental approach. And at the end, I'm going to talk about the simulated approach. So first, for the say, theoretical explanation, we first make some preliminary proofs in order to see what are the important parameters in this uh, interaction between the water, the floor, the cup, and the ping pong ball. As, as you can see in this uh, snapshot of uh, one video that we record, the most important thing here is that the, uh, when the cup hits the floor, it generates a central water jet that transfers energy and momentum to the ping pong ball and make the cumulative cannon possible. So how, why is this happening? It is happening, we think into account the adhesive force between the water molecules and the uh, cup walls. If we take into account that adhesive force, the surface of the water will behave as an oscillating membrane. And that oscillating membrane will be deformed in this way, following this equation over here, where this is the most important parameters. Now, if we have axial cylindrical symmetry, like in our case, we can solve this equation to have the uh, analytical solution for the modes of vibration that are a composition between cosine, sine, and the vessel functions. That natural modes are the modes that will uh, make that membrane oscillate, okay? So what is happening in the reality is that when the cup hits the floor, there's an energy transfer between the floor and the cup. And at the end, some part of that energy will reach the surface of the water and will excite some of the modes of the natural modes. The linear combination of that modes will generate this profile of water deformation. And something important to notice is that each one of these modes has a specific associated frequency that will determine how much energy is needed to excite them. So if we increase the number of the vibrational modes, we will need more energy to excite them. And you can see that there's a clear difference between the geometry of the lowest in energy vibrational modes and the higher in energy vibrational modes. And that's a key point that we think we need to think, think, take into account, okay? To, in order to prove our theoretical hypothesis, we made this experimental setup. We use a video camera to record our experiments. We use, uh, we change the two main parameters in order to have uh, the initial energy of the system change it, and is the water inside the head of the water inside the cup and the dropping height. We try different type of glasses. We use different type of ball, ping pong balls, but at the end we take that this is the best configuration for the experiments. And each experiment test would carry out five times for a total amount of 100 free experiments. If you want to see the data, there is available in this GitHub repository. Now we decide also to change the viscosity of our cumulative cannon, changing the fluids, and what we obtain is presented after this uh, clarification of the parameters of the experiments that are very important here, and the conditions to make the experiments and the theory and the theory comparable. The, the conditions are the surface must be flat and regular, the cup base also must be flat and regular, and the cup have a cylindrical axial symmetry. The data collection was made using Tracker, and we can obtain the, the, uh, the we can see the experimental points over here. First, I'm going to talk about what happened with the viscosity variation. We can see that there are blue points that correspond to experiments with we remain fixed the fluid height inside the cup. And what you can see is that when you reduce the viscosity, the energy transformation percentage increase, and that's also happened with the maximum height reached by the pimple ball. So in order to maximize these two quantities that are the quantities involved, involved in this problem, we need to reduce the viscosity that we use in our experiments. The, if we see the red points are uh, with the fluid mass con constant, and that means that the energy transformation at the maximum high uh, also is maximized when you reduce the viscosity. It says exactly the same, and this was the maximum values obtained for these parameters. So we decide to keep fixed uh, the water as the fluid that composes our cumulative canon for the rest of the experiments. Then we need to characterize the uh, potential energy invested by the system in the generation of that central water jet. For doing that, we extract a water deformation profile from the tracker uh, uh, archive, and we fit a Laurentian function in order to approximate that central water jet column. And what we found as a roughly approximation is that the energy invested in the generation of the central water jet 
when you change the dropping height and when you change the water height, it's almost a value, a constant value that represents the uh, most significant part of the energy of the system. So most of the part of the energy is uh, invested in the generation of this central water jet. But now we want to see what happened with the maximum height and with the energy transformation of the ping pong ball. So if we have always the same percentage of energy that is invested in the generation of the central water jet, that means that if we increase the initial energy of the system, increasing the dropping height, we will think that we will increase also the kinetic energy that is, has been transferred to the ball, and that uh, means maximum height that are higher. But that, that linear behavior that corresponds to the green curve only happens in the first region of this experiment. You can see that at some point, there's a saturation point and the maximum height start to go down. And that means that there are energy losses that we are not taking into account in this linear behavior. So we say, we can see that these energy losses increase as an exponential function when you increase the initial energy of the system. So if we combine the linear expected behavior of the initial energy minus the energy losses, we can obtain the, the black graph that represents the behavior of the maximum height with the parameters that are important in this experiment. And this is very something very important. With this specific combination of parameters, we obtain a total um, a maximum height of 1.5 meters. Now, what happened with the energy transformation? What happened in the energy transformation is exactly the same that we see before. At the beginning, with the initial energy of the system is low, what happened is that all the energy is invested almost in the generation of this uh, central water jet, and some of the energy is invested in the kinetic energy of the ping pong ball and increase when you increase that energy. But after the saturation point, there are the appear there energy losses due, the, due to the maximum amount of energy of the of initial energy of the system. That means that if you remember the vibrational modes, that means that you have enough energy to now excite the more uh, energetic vibrational modes, and that uh, modes as full of full of ripples, as you can see in the figures. And that ripples will dissipate uh, uh, some of the, the most part of the energy. So that's the way we can explain uh, after this regime, we can reduce the energy, the energy transformation transfer to the ping pong ball is reduced and also the maximum height. In this case, with these combination of parameters, the maximum uh, percentage of transformation of energy was almost 6%. Now that was for the changing the dropping height, but we have another method to change the initial energy of the system that is increasing the mass inside the cup. And we can increase that uh, changing the water height inside the cup. So that's what exactly what we do. And what we found is exactly the same behavior that I explained it before. We have a sum limit until the maximum height reach his maximum. And after that, the maximum height is rolled down. Uh, and the energy losses are behaving like an exponential um, way. So if we combine again these two uh, uh, observations, we cannot think the, exactly the same uh, formula that before that only depends on the parameters of the experiments. In this case, the maximum height was almost uh, two meters. In this case, it was 1.7 meters that we obtained uh, with this combination of parameters. And in the case of the energy transformation, the, we can see exactly the same. The energy transformation for the regime there where the more energetic duration and more are excited, increase, but after some point, these modes are uh, gaining importance and will uh, make that the energy losses increase a lot. Now, if that is true, we can be able to uh, reproduce the water deformation profile of the, re the linear regime only using the lowest in energy vibrational modes. And that's exactly what we, you can see here. The blue points are the data and uh, correspond to the water uh, jet deformation. And we fit them with a um, the linear combination of the four lowest mean energy vibrational modes, it fits uh, very well. Now, we decide to go even farther and we decide to propose a simulation in the software Abacus in order to see what happened in, in, with the same system. So we can simulate it. And what we obtained was this one over here. You can see that this is the last and after that, it hits the, the surface and it has the water deformation. Now, we can able to we we need to be able to explain that water deformation with the same idea that I presented before, and that's what we did. We do. We use the parameters for the linear regime, and that parameters will generate a central water jet that could be fitted with the linear combination of the lowest mean energy vibrational modes, and that's exactly what you can see in this uh, slide. So to conclude, the cumulative canon can be explained by the water deformation described by the linear combination of these vibrational modes. 
Something very important is that the maximum height can be reached by the ball is determined by this equation over here that is independent of our experimental parameters. So can, you can estimate the maximum height with other experimental parameters. And in our case, the maximum height reached was almost two meters and 6.5% in the energy transformation. Thanks. Okay. My name is Ivan Palon, I'm a member of the Russian team, and I'm happy to present you our position of problem number one, creative cat. Uh, so, let's uh, remind the statement of the problem uh, once more. Uh, firstly, it's a little bit strange that a uh, problem is named cumulative canon, but uh, in the report we even uh, were uh, told about cumulative effects uh, that can uh, be in this problem, so it seems to be true that uh, we'll talk about it in the discussion. And also, we had to optimize the maximum height the ball can uh, go from uh, from the from the cup and the energy transfer. But uh, what was uh, not so clear in the report that uh, report didn't include the ball in all his simulations and mathematical model. So it's uh, unclear for me how uh, does that take out interaction between uh, water jet, uh, the water in the in the cup and uh, the ball. I think it's. Uh, really good point to describe later this discussion. And if you talk about the main results which were done in this report, um, there are, uh, talk, so, so initially Porter told us about the uh, water deformation uh, that he observed, and uh, he says there are some uh, modes of oscillation, of, but um, unfortunately, we didn't see them uh, from some experimental pictures or videos, so, um, it would be better if a reporter was uh, shown us, showed us uh, these uh, complicated modes uh, to be, in, order that in order we could be sure that the really effect is about these modes. Uh, next, we talk about uh, the model uh, with some energy between uh, water and the membrane uh, and find the theoretical evolution, theoretical simulation for such, such a membrane isolation. Uh, but we still uh, want some questions about this. Uh, if it is correct about uh, uh, talking about this flat uh, membrane, because in my opinion, uh, there are one uh, more effect. There is one more effect which can uh, influence the phenomenon really high. Uh, is there is surface, surface tension, and uh, we shall sure look about it in the discussion. Um, and while changing the parameter, while parameter investigation reporters uh, change the density of fluid, fluid is called the fluid and initial drop height and fluid mass in the glass. Uh, but what was uh, not so clear in this experiment is that while changing the uh, reliable viscosity of the water, the water also uh, changed the surface tension of the, of the uh, liquid. And uh, he changed it uh, incredibly high because the uh, surface tension of water and uh, uh, glycerin of alcohol, which he used in his uh, report, they are uh, incredibly different. So uh, I, I mean that uh, accuracy of this experiment is not so high, and uh, it's better to report it, take into account uh, the role of surface, surface tension. Uh, and also that was a really good uh, result that he obtained the maximum energy transfer. It was uh, 2% uh, so that's a pretty good uh, energy transfer coefficient for such problem. And if we talk about the main results uh, of the report, uh, we, may say, we may say that um, main uh, strong point of his theory was talking about uh, uh, about uh, membrane simulation, of, uh, so if you like this point, uh, but we still are not sure if uh, this is the key phenomenon of the problem, uh, and we'll describe it. Uh, next, uh, in experimental setup, uh, human factor wasn't excluded, so there's some wrong in the presentation, uh, because he uh, reported dropped his glass uh, by hand, and uh, so there are different initial parameters. Uh, also, glass can uh, go down uh, and hit not at uh, not horizontally, um, but uh, there was clear methodic of uh, measurements of maximum height and energy transfer. Also, it was very good to the report that uh, report changed the density of the fluid, viscosity of the fluid, initial drop height, fluid mass, and uh, density of it. Um, so, but uh, there are still for some points to improve. In my opinion, there are. Um, it's uh, to take uh, motion into account motion in, of the water in the cup during uh, the cup uh, moves down because uh, there are, so we can, why it's important we can discuss uh, later, in this, later in discussion and also take uh, plastic information to take into account because if you drop one glass for a few times, it will deform very much 
and it also can uh, uh, way of energy loss and the valve start for its equilibrium factor and uh, deformation of the grass. So now we're going to the discussion. And uh, firstly, uh, I'd like to give to talk with you about the experimental setup and uh, points to improve it. Uh, so, um, do you, so uh, the, the, the sorry, can you, can you stop yeah. uh, sharing a screen yeah. in order to share my presentation? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I stop it. Thank you. So you can now discuss. Yeah. Uh, so first, the first question, the table to do you agree that um, a human factor can be important in this problem? Sorry, can you repeat it? Sorry. Uh, do you agree that a uh, human factor, while you uh, release your glass, can be important? We reduce that human aspect because we use to control that dropping height. We use this mechanism over here. I'm going can, to can you please show it to me, this mechanism? Over here. Uh, and uh, how do we release it? So, uh, I mean, uh, you rotate it and uh, your glass releases and go down, yeah? You can touch uh, the, 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 but the um, bottom part oh, okay. of the mechanism, yeah. you can touch it and it's, uh, let the cup drop. Let the yeah. drop. Thank, thank, thank you, it's now it's much more clear for me, but I have one more question about this setup. Um, so did you always uh, take, so what part of glass did you take with your metal hands of this setup? Always the same or it was different? The dropping. The dropping height was different, but we can control it with this. We can change uh, this. I, so, uh, I mean, not dropping height, but uh, uh, let, 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 let me draw it. Let, let, let me draw it. Uh, you have this and this. Uh, I'm talking about that. Um, this is your. This is, so this is your setup. This one. This yes. is your robotic hand, and this is your cup. Yes. Was this point of cup always the same? Or did you take it so, or did it? Or no, did always, the same, always the same. You yeah, we put it at the limit yeah. of the cup. Thank you, thank you. It's, so it's a really good point of... Uh, of yes, of yes, work. yes. And uh, next I'm going to talk about the, uh, why um, do I recommend you to track the water level uh, of uh, the water in cup as a function of time? Because uh, so it's well-known experiment uh, with uh, cumulative uh, jets uh, when we take uh, some glass with water. Yes, to, yes. We release it. And uh, if you take a high uh, speed camera, you can make clearly see that water uh, raised on the glass. So it uh, so initial so height of the water in the cup increases function of time. Uh, and so it happens because of the surface tension effects. And do you think that uh, it means that the surface tension effect can be important in your problem too? Uh, the surface tension in our case wasn't taken into account, but uh, what are you saying? Uh, it's exactly it, it's okay. I, are you, for example, we can improve our solution in order to see how much it's deformated that water in the cup. For example, if we use a video camera with uh, slow motion, we can uh, um, record the experiment and determine how much that water uh, is deformed, because we need to take into account if it is enough to change. Uh, our description of the problem, but we need to uh, take it on. Can you please mm -hmm. show the picture uh, to make it clear what you what you mean by water deformation? Sorry, can you repeat it? Uh, so you talk about water deformation. Can you please show some picture to make it clear uh, what you mean by it? Yes, yes. I'm yeah. gonna show you. It would be it would be very good. Uh, yeah. So you mean uh, that water water jet maybe yeah? Yes. Water yes. Deformation. Oh, okay, okay. So now it's much clearer for me. Uh, can you please open now frame where you talk about the different fluids that you used? Yes. Yeah. So we have the uh, water, alcohol, and cooking oil. Uh, so as it's, I think, as you know, uh, water and alcohol have uh, has really different, uh, not only has very different uh, surface tensions, but their viscosities are nearly the same. So don't you think that uh, this experiment with uh, taking water and alcohol, you change not so viscosity, but the surface tension? Yes, you have reason in that point. There are, there are, there are liquid that has almost the same viscosity and we can, uh, here with that experimental setup using water and alcohol, we could estimate the, the real influence of the surface tension in this model. Yeah, and so, uh, also can, uh, uh, so I agree with it that, uh, from this, uh, Points so you, for the two points, so make little sense that uh, even uh, the changing of the tension can really influence the energy transfer mechanism. 
Uh, next, can you please open uh, some frame or video? It was basically a simulation where you uh, has 3D picture of, of jet. Picture of the jet. Well, this one over here. Uh, it was in report. In report about no, uh, it's numerical simulation. With the simulation. Yeah. This one. It, or the no, picture. No. Uh, can you please one previous frame? Open. This one. Yeah, yeah. It was it was done in this pro in this, in this program. Can you show okay. please? Uh, it's a shape. Yes. I'm gonna show you. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I would like to remind that uh, now we have a uh, general discussion between teams, so not only a reporter and opponent can uh, uh, ask in questions, but uh, also okay, so anyone if, from if, team. If, if anyone has a question, just uh, write plus in the chat and I'll see it and ask you. Uh, so, and uh, while now they wrote it, I have a question to point about uh, this animation. So, can you play it once more? Yeah, we can clearly see that uh, there are some uh, jet effects, and uh, after it, uh, jet goes into break into droplets. So, how do you think? Why is it so? And why in the simulation appear the droplets? Yeah, we have lots of droplets uh, on the on the top. Uh, what's because why why, why does it, why does it appear? These droplets appear when the water jet reaches its maximum height, and at the end it breaks, and the waters go off the glass. Uh, but so so, uh, may, so maybe you did, did you try to estimately calculate the Weber number of your system? Sorry, can you repeat it? I uh, so uh, do you know uh, such thing as a Weber number, which is dimensionless parameter, which is used in hydrodynamics? Yes, I, I can understand all well the question. Sorry. Uh, okay, no mind. I'll rephrase it. Uh, so I'm uh, talking about that. Uh, don't you think uh, that? Uh, this breaking your jet into droplets can be caused uh, not uh, by not because of uh, your jet get get to maximum height, but not because, but because of surface tension forces. Can they uh, break your jet, or is it only yes. a mechanism of getting high, high, high enough? Do you mean that the surface tension is the important parameter in order to obtain that drop? Uh, yes, I uh, want to describe it with you. Okay. okay. I have. Yeah. I have a question, but well, if yeah. you notice okay. in, during the formation of the of the jet, the uh, surface tension of the water or the liquid is break, is, is broke, is broke. So, what do you do? Your model uh, are in agreement between this, these two different models because we have the formation of the of the jet at the beginning when we have that the break, uh, the surface tension is not is not working, but after that time, the, the jet is deformated and and the the surface tension is is broke. So. What what did what are the, the, your suggestion for for model that for taking into account the, these these changes in the in the surface station this uh, yes <laughs> okay so is it clear now for this question yes yeah okay so uh, so uh, we have a question from uh, Dimitro Spinov so ask please uh, as I understand from your theory it's possible to achieve effect uh, due to uh, heat the glass uh, with water from the bottle side. If we will don't uh, uh, throw the bottle uh, through the glass on the floor uh, instead of so, it, we uh, will heat. Dimitro, is it okay if I interrupt you and okay, yeah. phrase the question? So uh, he's asking about if we take the bottle and heat it from down, with not not, not release from heat, but 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 all this. Yes. Uh, and he's asking about if a uh, phenomenon can appear in this case. And uh, as I understand uh, from your theory, your theory will predict it. Yes, in our theory, if you have the energy to uh, excite off the, the modes where your impulse, you will be, you will see the, 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 the vibrational modes. And have you checked ex experimentally? We can check experimentally, for example, if we with use this one. Speaker. With this one. But how do you guarantee the enough energy to to excite the modes, you need. For example, if you use a speaker, you can control so, uh, the frequency, and with the frequency, you can control the uh, the so mode. If I hit it, if I hit it uh, very, with a uh, big force, it will phenomenon will appear. If I hit it uh, with uh, very big force, it it will appear. Yeah. Yes, if I have enough energy. Okay. Thank, the, thank, the, thank the, you. Now it's uh, now it's much clearer. And also this question from Ivan Kolesnikov. Please ask. 
Um, okay, so my question is the following. Uh, so you're talking about the molds which appear on the surface of the water, but you're talking only about uh, clean water surface which don't include the ball, obviously. Only about the water? So, uh, yes. So my question is, how does what? the ball influence the mold appearing on the top of your water and how does it influence the phenomenon? Um, you theoretically predict the molds appear on top of your water surface, but you're talking about only pure water surface, which obviously don't include the ball. So the question is, how does the ball influence this shape of the surface? And uh, how does the ball influence the jet height and the jet height okay. formation? Yes, uh, the ball is a key parameter in order to, to, to establish the conditions necessary to that, that our model works. For that reason, we need to use a pin moon balls that doesn't um, affect that surface of the water too much. For that reason, we use the ping pong ball with a lower mass in order to reduce that surface deformation in our case and to match with our theory. But you have you you have a good point. If you if you put a ping pong ball that is uh, massive, it will it will deformate that um, that that surface of the water, and that's something important. So your, your model says basically that the surface deformation, the jet, is driving the ball upwards. Yes. Have you investigated the, what happens without a ball in the same experimental conditions? Yes, what happens with the, without the ball is the same water deformation. We prove it same that... Height it, of, and have you measured the height of the jet? No, we made it qualitative, not quantitative. We see that the water, deform the water was formed, but we can ensure that has the same height. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have also a, deformation, uh, a question so for the, for the uh, opponents, or how you, you identify the surface tension as an important um, parameter in the, in the... So, but how would you check for the... For how surface tension? Uh, okay, so I can role play this surface. question. Yeah, uh, I say that it's it's very important because uh, if you increase the initial uh, height of the car, uh, if it's, if this height is uh, high enough, uh, we may see a curve formation, uh, and uh, in this case we would have a pretty uh, powerful uh, cumulative jet when we, when the car hits uh, the plane. But it will happen only for uh, big uh, heads of uh, capitalism. Mm -hmm. So, question uh, is uh, finished. Uh, next question from the Alexi, please. Uh, do, I uh, do I understand the report correctly that uh, if we have a, a surface which the contact angle is uh, uh, above uh, 90 degrees? an unwettable surface, uh, then the effect cannot be observed. Like if you cover your cup with grids, with uh, uh, paraffin, whatever, uh, there will be uh, no cumulative effect at all. Yes, if we, if, if there's, if we don't ensure that the shape of the water it's stable. The water, the, the water deformation can occur in our theory. Yes. Uh, have you checked it experimentally? No, we doesn't prove it that changing the walls, the addition to the walls, what okay. happened with it, we change the wall, the addition to the walls. So we haven't checked it experimentally. Mm -hmm. and, uh, okay, is... and we have a next question. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Alexei. We have next qu next question from the Rafael, please. <laughs> So guys, hi. I have a question for both teams. Uh, do you expect any change uh, to change the ball with the diameter? Yes, I will ask. I will ask that if we change the ball diameter, what will have what you you guarantee the same amount of energy transference, but you have now more surface to contact with the drag of the air. So taking into account the drag of the air, the, the, with the same amount of energy, the ping pong ball that it has a bigger diameter, haven't reached the same highest height that can be a small one. Yeah, and uh, for me, so I think that if we uh, change the uh, diameter of the ball, uh, there are two principal difference in uh, qualitative physics. Firstly, um, uh, 
it depends on uh, what is thickness of the cumulative jet which uh, appears um, or perturbation model as in the reporter's uh, works. Uh, how does it, uh, is it higher than uh, the ball radius? Because if uh, thickness of this jet will be higher than uh, the ball radius, uh, ball, in, in this case, uh, increasing uh, the diameter uh, far ball won't give us a uh, bigger, bigger height. And also, if we increase the radius of the ball, we also uh, fastly increase the air resistance that will minimize uh, maximum possible uh, height of, of the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for the comment. And we have uh, one uh, question from the Jorgen. Jorgen, please. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, to the reporter, have you investigated uh, the temporal moment uh, when the ball removes, uh, uh, lo gets loosed, loosened from the uh, jet? So at which uh, dynamic uh, of the jet? Sorry, can you repeat it? Research what? At which time uh, the ball uh, gets uh, loose from the uh, uh, jet that uh, the ball has no contact uh, with the jet anymore? Uh, we can see that moment on the video that we record, but we can we didn't quantify, but we can explore our data and obtain it from there without problem. Because uh, after that, only it's a ballistic flight of the ball. Uh, yes, and, we have. Uh, so the dynamics of the chat creation perhaps uh, can be important. Yes, we 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 found that after that we have a parabolic moment due to that. That what you spend after the of these are the trajectories of our ping pong balls, and after that content area, as you say, it behaves like a parabolic motion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, I think we have uh, uh, so uh, a little time for the quick questions from the Alexi, please. Mm. I would. Uh, when you conducted your experiments, did the ball always rise to the same height, or how different was it in, in terms of the percentage? When we use the same conditions, the variations you can see, we... Oh, sorry, I'm going to share screen. When we have, the, for example, these error bars corresponds to that variation of the height of the ping pong ball when you have exactly the same condition because we've made experiments five times for experiment variation. And for the first and fourth points, there was no variations at all, like the height was the same with the accuracy of a few percent. Well, there's variation, but it's so mm, minimum that we can see it, but there, there's so wheels variation. So these points were too stable in our experiments. You have reason, but there's variation. There's a, a little variation of height there. Mm 